The Stairway to Heaven February 6, 2013 A Level 5 Trip Report from Shumari What happened to me this last month has made me lose all my trust and reliability in both the dosage and the mushroom itself. This was the latest in a series of four very intense and meaningful trips. The first three with my girlfriend, and this last, truly enlightening but frightening trip by myself. The weirdness of it all peaked on this last trip, with a mere 2.5 grams of lemon teched, with what I thought was a reasonably weak strain, since I've cultivated it myself, and had a few giggles and good times with it before. But when you trip so hard that your physical self completely dies, goes off into an indescribable and impossible supersymmetric, multi-dimensional god realm, meets the one, and still gets to come back from it to tell tales, you know that something very real, scary, weird, and amazing is happening. This is that place that all the ancients and crazy psychonauts have talked about all these years. When you get here, there is no doubt about it, no doubt. It is the kind of trip that you could strive for your whole life, but you are scared senseless at the same time when you realize you are getting there. You try to use your courage as your raft as you stream down this crazy river into the abyss, but make no mistake, Fear is always around the corner, just waiting to get a hold of you, so you must trust that your raft is strong. And it is my friends, and I don't care who you are. Your heart is a lot braver than you think. You got to put it to the test. And man, there are some heavy tests out there. I am a skeptic at heart, and hopefully always will be. I have been an atheist for most of my life because of my circumstances and upbringing but I seriously started realizing that life's mysteries are way beyond measuring instruments and other people's opinions. It is up to us as individuals to solve this mystery, for that is the game. Why else would we live in this weird illusion we call the physical universe? Every single person must trust themselves enough to take the journey towards enlightenment and not take the words of others so much to heart that it overpowers what they already know is true but have forgotten. Anyway, if you are still here reading, I'm going to try to go through the stages of this extremely interesting trip with you. The trip you live to see. My girlfriend had just left for work and wouldn't be home for the next seven hours. So what else to do but chug a little mushroom? I thought. I ground up 2.5 grams cubes and stirred them with squeezed lemon juice and let them sit in the fridge for about an hour. I added some squeezed orange into the mix just for the hell of it, and slammed it like a shot. The usual routine starts. I light up some candles, put on some music, and start rolling some joints. You can't have a decent Salasi bin party all by yourself without some sweet sense in your veins, right? About an hour or so in, I start to feel weird, so I decided to go out for a walk. Some perception changes, visual distortion, and racing thoughts but other than that I was fine. Apparently, I suck at throwing snowballs when under the influence of mushrooms. After about 10 to 15 minutes outside just walking around, I started to get cold, so I headed back to the apartment. And it was when I opened the door and went inside that it really hit me hard. I felt like robot. Warning, warning. Severe reality breakdown ahead. Oh man, I didn't sign up for this. How much was it? 2.5. No way. I walked into the kitchen, and everything turned into a scene from The Simpsons or something, completely cartoon-like. I wasn't freaking out at this point, because I've had very intense trips before. But when I laid down on the couch to chill out for a second, the mushroom made himself known to me for what I think is the first true time. Even though I felt his presence on earlier trips, watching me, he steps forward. Me? Is that you? Moments of silence. Mushroom. What do you think? Me? Haha. <laughs> it is you. Hello. Mushroom. Hello. Me. I sense that you are afraid of me. I'm a bit scared of you too. But I'm here as a friend. You seem cool. After that, he disappeared for a while. And at this point, I started to freak out. This intelligent mushroom being had just talked to me. And now he is in my mind. My body and even in the very walls in which I am confined. If I wanted to escape this, it would be impossible, and that made me shiver. He had all the power of this interaction, and I had none. How long before this is over? I thought. 
I realized that I was still in the coming up phase and hadn't even peaked. I mean, what do you do when things get more intense than ever before, and you know you are still in for a lot more? The answer, nothing. You just let it happen anyway. It doesn't matter if you are scared senseless or not because it is happening. It is really happening. I remember Terence McKenna speaking of encounters like this, which calmed me because it meant I wasn't insane. Other people had talked to this thing before, many times, probably. I wanted to put some music on to calm me. The only problem was that sounds were so warped and weird that any music I put on only scared me because it was so unfamiliar and unrecognizable. The mushroom came back and made his presence known. Me, I'm really freaking out here. Can you be less frightening? No answer. Me, I'm here as a friend, as your friend. I want to grow and cultivate you if you let me, but stop messing with me like this. Not very friendly. No answer this time either, but I could both see and feel him grinning in the walls. A little bit evil perhaps, but hard to tell before he went off taking care of his business again. What a son of a bitch. I thought to myself, shortly after realizing he could probably hear me, he left me alone in the weirdness, and I was just waiting for something to happen. Cause to be perfectly honest with you. I had no idea what was going on or what was about to happen. I guess I just wanted a way out because this was scary. Isn't it funny? Just when you thought you were getting experience with these things and being able to control them, the mushroom sweeps that away from under your feet in a second blank. Me, if you make this good for me, I will grow you. That is a deal, but we are in your world now, so don't hurt me. I couldn't imagine what else he wanted to hear from me, and it seemed like the only gift I could offer him, the gift of life and experience through me and others. After that, something pulled me into the bathroom and into the tub. I'm sure it was the mushroom, cause I felt like a weak sheep being led by this higher intelligence to what would come to be my death and rebirth. From when I got into the bathtub, time and everything else became completely meaningless. Somehow, I managed to turn the water off when the tub was full. After that, it was time to say bye to life as we know it. It could have taken one hour or three seconds, but when you are dead, you are not thinking about it. You don't even know it is happening. I've been close to having ego deaths before, but man, this was nothing like that. You kind of eased into it and merged with it without even knowing that it was happening. It's somewhat of a smooth transaction between boundaries being dissolved and you are not really thinking in terms of being alive or dead anymore. Fear is pretty much wiped out, except that you can still feel it lurking in the shadows of the deep, unconscious minds. There is a thin thread being attached to your body and physical reality that gives you a clue that you will come back from this. It wasn't a forced survival feeling, more of an assurance. I guess some people would describe it as God's love or true hope or something like that. I saw this sea of souls swimming around in a vast space and was told that it was the ancients. I guess they were swimming around trying to decide whether to go back to live another earth life or go to some other place. They seemed to chill out and be fine anyway, whatever they were doing. A moment after that, I was thrown into a world that seemed utterly impossible, just crazy. I mean, how the hell can dimensions bend each other like that? and just play around with light like toys. What is this? The mushroom told me that this was an introduction to the DNT world, and that things can get way crazier than my current imagination is possible of conceiving. So I don't even mind trying to figure this out right now because it won't work. Ok, I said. A short moment later, he was there, right in front of me, the one. The interaction was short and brief, but it was a formal introduction by the mushroom. He had taken me to him and introduced us face to face. There was no doubt in my skeptical mind left. They knew each other and people before I had been laid here by the mushroom as well. Now the questions I had were few because I have always wanted life to be a mystery to solve, piece by piece. I'm still young and don't want it all at once. I can't appreciate it fully yet. But he basically told me what I already knew. Religions are nonsense. Science is fun, but limits our perception of reality, and the only way to true godliness is by walking our own path. Enlightened people and teachers are only there as signposts to help you along the way, but no one or nothing in the world 
can prepare you for something like this. Only the trust in your own courage and love will take you to the kind of places where you can meet the one in these direct ways. I must say it feels wrong to claim all of this. I'm really putting into making this as truthful and clear as possible for myself and for you guys. The respect I have for this powerful tool has skyrocketed in my last few trips and everything I tell you here is from my own perspective. I do not claim to be enlightened or a teacher or anything of that sort. I hope stories like mine will encourage people to find out the truth by themselves being their own Jesus or Buddha. Anyway, when I woke up from this, starting to come to my senses again, I felt powerful. I mean really, godlike. During my time in the tub, I must have squeezed out shampoo or balsam in the bath water in an effort to make a bubble bath, cause the spread out shampoo blobs had formed these clusters of galaxies on the surface of the water, as if I had just created a big bang and was looking down on my little creation on the surface of a layer, invisible to the inhabitants in the shampoo blob world, living in their illusion of separateness. I went out of the bathtub naked and around the apartment, just looking around, and man, it was crazy. I managed to look at the clock. It had been about three hours since I ingested it, and I felt like I'd been gone for days. This made me very uneasy, because I'd been through so much already. I needed to come down and reassess everything that had happened, not continue to trip for hours ahead. I realized that this is exactly the kind of godlike initiation that Sons of God goes through. It has something to do with being in the water, and that these baptized concepts are so misunderstood by religions that it's not even funny. The original baptizing ceremonies were probably scary, and there is a lot more to it than a little water on the forehead, a kiss, and some blessing words. My rabbit had hidden under the couch for some reason. The mushroom was fooling around in the walls, just being silly, invisible to the eyes, but present in every other sense. Robert Plant and the rest of the guys on my girlfriend's big Led Zeppelin poster had completely jumped out from the picture, moving around in threed, swinging, dancing, just rocking it. I mean, these guys were putting on a show. I could even hear the music. The whole apartment rocked like a ship on the sea, and I felt like being inside an aquarium, but a weird mushroom aquarium. As I was strolling around the apartment, trying to find things to get a grasp on, I was making these weird humming noises, feeling my whole body and my whole world vibrate with it. It was a sense of you creating the world around you with mind and sound. When I looked at the piano in the living room, I could almost press the bars with my mind and hear the music play in my head as I was mind playing it, and I'm not usually the greatest artist on the piano. The candles I had lit earlier were intense and bright. Something had breathed life into the whole apartment because, at this point, absolutely anything was possible. Although present, the mushroom made no effort to talk to me again during the rest of this trip, which probably was for the best. He had shown me so much and introduced me to the one after knowing me for such a short while. How much more can you ask of it at this point? I decided to get into the warm bathtub again and just let whatever happened to me because nothing was in my control. This seemed like the only sane thing to do, so I did. I laid there in the bathtub, just waiting for it to come off cause. Honestly, I had been through way too much for one day already. Maybe that is the reason I don't remember so much from the last parts of the trip and the coming down, but whatever happened, it was not as important as the things I still can remember vividly, which is the first two thirds of the trip. Lying down in the tub for a second time, I remember going through different fears in my head, being afraid of them, but at the same time realizing they are all illusions. So, what is left to be afraid of? I waited for some kind of answer or picture, but it was blank, which made it very obvious that when you have erased all illusions of fear, it is just gone which sounds silly, but it seemed important at the time. I was really balancing on a thin thread of unpleasant experiences created by some unknown fear in my unconscious and moments of glory in the sunshine of God. Eventually, I got my shaked up, the body and mind out of the tub again. Somehow, I remembered I had promised my girlfriend to bid on some clothes for her son on the internet. The only problem being I was still pretty tripped out and trying to bid on things on the internet in this state of mind is like controlling an alien spacecraft 
trying to get through a meteor cloud, going 30,000 miles per hour, mind-boggling. My girlfriend came home. I came down, and I could start to get all of this off my chest. Luckily, she is a hell of a cool girl, so we shared a few joints and talked it through. When I described the complete unreliability of the dosages these last trips, despite an earlier more or less reliable mushroom use with equal doses, she formed the theory that I now had formed a relationship with the mushroom bond, that the doses I need to visit these secret places may be far less than for the average person, and it seems likely. The reports I read from the kind of trips I have are way beyond the doses I use. I've had everything from 2.5 to 6 grams, and honestly, I can't tell the darn difference anymore. Is it possible to become super sensitive to Ftilisabin? Or could it be that the spirit of the mushroom has it easier to get a grasp of my mind and alter my reality now that it knows me and my intentions more thoroughly? I don't know. Only time will tell.